Morning folks. I am going to provide a review of my entire experience with Sattva. We're talking about the purchase, the delivery, the return. Full disclosure, we did return it after sleeping on it for 20 nights. Um, hint, it was due to the softness, but I'll also talk about uh, my final opinion of both the mattress and the experience. So, let's get into it. What I'm doing is looking at the Sattva website. Now, what's interesting about the Sattva website is that they have a lot of information that classic mattress manufacturers don't have on their website. So the one we purchased was the Sattva Classic. When we go in here, we got all these options. The one we picked was the Plush Soft. Queen in the 14 and a half inch. We also added the foundation. It looks like it's the same exact sale that we purchased with on December 31st. It could have been January 1st. I'm not, I, I can't remember the exact date. We didn't order a frame because we had a queen, a king size frame and it cut down to a queen. So we just used the frame we already had. Um, this amount, the 1494, that's before taxes. Ours came to, hmm, just about 1600 it was like 1598 and some change 1599 so we ended up picking the plush soft because as we get down further we have this scale where it shows one being like on a cloud and 10 laying on diamonds which i find very amusing because that is realistic to most bodies. You either feel like you're on a cloud or you feel like you're laying on the hardest thing on earth, which happens to be diamonds. But we picked the Plush Soft because on a scale of 1 to 10, Plush Soft 3 is the third possible softest on the scale, on the 10-point scale. Now we are comparing this Sofa mattress, sight unseen when we purchased it, against a roughly 12, 11 to 12 year old Stearns and Foster Abby Lynn Ultra Plush Euro Top. Okay, so it has a big old pillow top and it was super soft. The Ultra Plush rating by Stearns and Foster, what the internet tells me anyways, about this mattress back when it was purchased, fell at an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the softest. So if you flip them, 10, 9, 8, 1, 2, 3, you would think, conceptually, they are, they should be pretty comparable. Now this just goes to show, as you'll find out later in this, in this video, not all scales are universally following the same metrics. So Plush Soft. We watch the video, and you see how it, how it can push in. I have some video also in one of my previous night's videos where I'm also sitting on it and pushing in. And what you see in that video looks exactly like what my video shows. However, I don't know what part it is about this build here that caused it to be as firm as it was, but my money is on this pillow top. There was a lot of give when you put some body weight onto it. So the pillow top felt very firm. And one of the things I noticed probably about halfway through is that when we laid down, you could see the bottom section of the mattress which you can see right here where the word Safa is this bottom part this was the part that seemed to compress as we laid on it closer to the edge this top part just kind of pushed down with us and never really seemed to compress which tells me a couple of things these edge supports are really really good they never once did I feel like I was going to roll out of bed that's a good thing the pillow top, however, it felt very firm. So I'm confident after 20 nights on this mattress that 
the coils were fairly soft, that the material was fairly soft, but there was something going on with the pillow top itself because it never really seemed to to accept us into it. I don't want to say it felt like sleeping on diamonds, but boy was it hard. So as we go through, the purchasing process very simple. Basically, I clicked on to add two items to the cart. It let me pay with PayPal, which, you know, I don't want to sound like a PayPal fanboy, but PayPal makes buying stuff easy. So we click on the add two items to cart. We get in there. We make the purchase. It's very simple. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go into orders. You're going to, you're going to see the order. So what you see is you can print the invoice. And I find it very interesting that it shows you the full prices, not the prices you paid, and then where in the process it is. I, that's not really an invoice to me. That's more of a pre-discount estimate, I guess you would say. It doesn't say anything about um, what the actual final price was, which I found very interesting in the whole process. It seems very amateur, so to speak. Now, I have not written a review yet. I likely will. I think it's important that they get the feedback. I shared the feedback with them when I went through the return process. Now, let me talk a little bit about that return process. On this website now, in the bottom left-hand corner, you should see this little chat button. And that, sounds, and that sounds like an awesome thing. But when I was trying to return, that chat button did not exist for some reason. It was in the morning, maybe 9, 9.30, 10 a.m. Eastern Time when I was trying to make the first call, and I called this number up here. The 1877 number. I called it and I got a message saying that their call volume is extremely high and it directed me to the chat function if I was willing to do it. So, okay, it was great. Well, I go back to the website. There was no chat function. I don't know why that was. And I'm just going to go back to the main page to see if it disappears. I wasn't paying attention to see if it was in there. There we go. So, we're on the main page. There's no chat function, even though I'm signed in. Oh, it just popped up. But when I looked for it, I couldn't find it. So I was I was hunting around a lot. And one of the things I ended up finding in the footer, all these links. And if you're not if you're not up to do with all the fancy interwebs things that are out there, always check the footer. You can almost always find what you're looking for. And then we have the chat function. So I click on chat, it pops up type it in, everything's good. I actually, the chat was simple. The customer service person, quick and to the point, didn't give me any grief. They offered a memory foam topper to help for free, ship it to me for free, no shipping costs, no handling costs, the product would have been free, to help alleviate some of the pains while the mattress was getting broken in. Um, I let them know that we had been sleeping on a comparable memory foam topper for 18 of the 20 nights. It might have been 19 of the 20 nights. I think we might have only made it one night without it. And it, it was no problem. I said, okay, great. We will, we will return it and we'll refund you all of your money except $99. And I said, great. I said it would take about 7 to 10 days to pick up. This is where it got really interesting. I saw a refund come through PayPal for twelve hundred and some, some money. It was twelve twenty-two, twelve twenty-four. I can't remember the exact amount. But the point being, I was like, from an almost sixteen hundred dollar purchase minus ninety-nine dollars, and you know, uh, cover a little bit of tax here and there. It should have been roughly close to. It should have been in the high fourteen hundreds not the low 1200s. And I, and I got to thinking, I was like, why is this number so wrong? I did a little bit of math and I figured out when I wrote in the chat that I purchased a mattress that I would like to return, the chat um, customer service agent read that as, I would like to return the mattress. And so they returned the mattress. And I confirmed this when I hopped back in the chat again and I said, before the um, 
folks come to pick up this return, I wanted to check to see if the return had only been processed for the mattress or the foundation or both or why the amount seems seems wrong. The new customer service agent very quickly looked it up and said, we return just the mattress, not the foundation. Would you like to also return the foundation? I said, of course I would. Went through the whole process. It was very quick and painless. Process return said it would take about seven, that they would cancel the previous return, start a new return, and that will probably add a couple of days lag um, before the peop guys come to, before the company comes to pick it up. And I say guys because it turned out to be the same moving company, Joe's Moving in Rochester, New York, that came to pick it up, that dropped it off. It just happened to be two different gentlemen. Um, and when they came, they had on their list only picking up the mattress, not the foundation, but they gladly took both. And I was okay with this because Safa had refunded both of those. They did a secondary refund for 200 and some change, which was the right amount to cover the two products. So in the end, Safa, good customer service, fast to the point, it leaves a little bit to des be desired when it comes to showing you the information regarding your order. Even to this point, and we're just waiting for it to open, even to this point, I didn't pay $13.99 and $309 plus tax. I paid $11.99 and then $279. I can't be 100% positive what the, what the foundation was, but it had a comparable amount off. Um, and then it doesn't even reference taxes in here, even on the order. And here it says it's delivered. Apparently the other order hasn't even been processed. And there's no documentation other than the return, the refund in, from PayPal email that I ever even returned the product. So it leaves a lot to be desired on that, on that level. Um, I did find it interesting that I never even got a confirmation email from Safa that I was getting a re that I returned anything or that they were picking it up. Um, again, the only emails I got were from the chat because when you open up the chat down here in the bottom right hand corner, email transcript, I picked that for both of my chat conversations. So Safa emailed me the chat conversations in their entirety, which showed that uh, return was processed. That's great, but if you're not, if you don't deal with online chat customer service very often, you might not know to go and look in the options to click that email button or to download a copy of the transcript. That's a very interesting um, situation there where Safa did not alert me at all. They didn't even acknowledge it. Even on their website, it still says I have this product. It's pretty amateurish. On, on the back end. Um, now to the actual product. Let, let's talk about the specifics of it. Because when when you are out there in the world and you're looking up mattress reviews, they talk about how soft it is, how firm it is, um, the and all the different review websites out there, most of which are affiliate marketing sites, so they want to give you give the product a decent enough review so that you understand the things that you're going to be purchasing. Sometimes they'll even lay on it. Some of the YouTube videos out there, they, um, they're they laying on it and whatnot. I'm not trying to make this review so I can compete with them because I think I'm going to become some affiliate marketer or some YouTube star with my reviews. I'm just sharing my experience with Safa. So long, long story short, this mattress is, let's see if we get a good picture here. That, that's a good one. The material craftsmanship is phenomenal. The materials were strong, yet soft, and it's different than being a plush soft firmness. The materials itself was soft, this organic cotton that they use. Um, let's see if we can get a little bit, there we go. This cotton that they use on it, I loved it. I thought it was super soft. I love the material. This, the stitching and the seams all along the edges super strong i the, the craftsmanship was grade a i will give it all the credit on earth for that the firmness definitely not a plush soft i if it were me i would i initially thought for a second we got the wrong one we got the wrong firmness 
but the manufacturing tag that was on it from the manufacturer the affiliated manufacturing plant in New Jersey where we got it from made it very clear that it was in fact the plush soft that was ordered and that that was what was built. If I had to throw a number on it, I would say it was probably a medium. Um, it, it had a little softness and I could see where the argument could be made that in the future it would break down a little bit, it would, it would become a little bit softer over time and maybe it might be a little softer but it's definitely not what I would call a plush soft. To, comp to compare this at the same level of plush softness to um, uh, a semi-luxury brand that costs a little bit more that we had slept on for an extended period of time in the Stearns and Foster, there, there's no comparison. And full disclosure, and I'll be doing another video for the comparison of the two and for the Stearns and Foster alone because I've had some comments of some folks that were out there paying attention to these videos. We ended up ordering the Stearns and Foster Cassette, Cassat, I don't know how they pronounce it. It was the only ultra plush Stearns and Foster that they had, and their ultra plush comes in rated A, again, 1098, versus the Safa 123, allegedly the same level. And what I can tell you is there is no comparison at all against which one came out of the box softer. That said, I would definitely say there is a big enough difference in the way the pillow tops are manufactured. You'll see this pillow top, it's just a second layer and it's all one seam. I can see why that is because as we go down to the cross section, durable edge support, I don't think they can build the, such a large support in there while having a cut in um, pillow top like the Stearns and Foster Cassett, which I will pull up so that you can see what it looks like. Apparently, when you use Bing, it doesn't actually show you the Stearns and Foster website. It's just blowing my mind right now. Um, I don't use Bing. I actually use the Chrome browser, but again, I don't want to distract anybody with all my bookmarks and whatnot. But so far, this is just as an aside, page one of Bing doesn't even show me the Stearns and Foster website. I think that's what it is, Stearns and Foster. No, I don't know how to spell. There we go. All right, Lux Estate, Pillow Top Ultra Plush. We ended up getting a king. So you can see the difference in price right there. But let's pull up this picture right there. So there we go. You see the Pillow Top, how it gets cut in and it looks like it's added on top of it. I don't know what the difference is between the two and, and why they're that way other than that that um, edge support. But something about the materials used, the memory foams used in the two different pillow tops caused all the difference in the world. Um, so it, my final recommendation is after you know sharing it all, the craftsmanship of the Safa was grade A, loved it, loved the materials, very strong. If you're looking for super soft, Safa Classic is not super soft. Despite the plush soft rating and being comparable to that other one, they're, they're in two different two different leagues. I would say that Safa is effectively tr the triple A of mattresses when it comes to soft. But if you're not looking for soft and you want a medium or a firm mattress, without me actually laying on one, I, c I will confirm with you that this company makes an awesome mattress. The craftsmanship is great. Give them a shot. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Um, in the end, the mattress just wasn't soft enough for us. And that's the key. That's really what it boiled down to. Everything else though, the price point is incredible in comparison to all the other um, 
in-store manufacturers that, I, that were out there and whatnot. Um, but again, it's just not the level of soft that people are looking for in a coil mattress. So I, I guess that's really where, where it falls down. In the end, it, I can recommend it to people who don't want soft. If you want a coil mattress that's more on the firm side but is great craftsmanship, the Safa Classic mattress will definitely do the trick. Be careful with their customer service. Um, the customer service is great, but the back end notification of anything you do with customer service leaves a lot to be desired. Um, and I guess that kind of falls into their customer relationship management software or the way that they code their sites. Again, as you saw, and we'll hop back in there one last time, when you go and look in orders, it does take a sec. It doesn't talk about tax. It doesn't show me the discounts. When I pull up the invoice, as you saw earlier, it doesn't even identify that it was paid for. So it, it resembles more of a quote or an estimate before any discounts, before any taxes are added. And even to this point, it doesn't even identify that it was ever returned and refunded. Um, they did right by me. They did everything correctly and they made it very simple. It's just wild to me that on the back end, this is what it looks like. So that's my review of the entire process, the purchase, the return, customer service, and just understanding that this is not as soft as it purports to be. It might be a level three on their softness scale, but it's not a level three on other brands' softness scales. So with that, I wish you all happy dreams, sleep well, and look out for the other videos regarding the Stearns and Foster and with the comparison of the two. So with that, sleep well. Okay, I filmed my ba very basic level review of my whole Safa buying um, process yesterday. And coincidentally, later in the day, I got a text message and an email from Joe's Moving um, identifying that they are coming to pick up both the mattress and the box spring next week. Um, I ended up having to contact them to let them know that both of those items were actually picked up on February 22nd. So that just kind of adds a little um, credence to the idea that the back end of Safa's buying process isn't necessarily the clearest. Um, I think it would have been beneficial in the customer portal there um, where it actually showed that items were returned. Um, you know, if you go back and you and you look at the previous screenshots I showed, it doesn't even show that taxes were paid on the purchase, that there were discounts given. Um, it doesn't. It, it still shows that it was delivered, not, in, not even that it was scheduled for return and refund. So just food for thought. Um, I found that interesting and coincidental that the day I film it, I get notice that they're going to come and pick it up, even though it's already been picked up. So anyways, just adding that into the end, so if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, hopefully I'll see them and I'll be able to answer them. With that, sleep well.